Hey professionals, today we're going to learn how to create any automatic elegant caption you can imagine with four essential skills and tools within DaVinci Resolve. And yes, these can automatically animate with snap captions, of course. And the reason I want to teach you this is it's becoming pretty much an essential skill for social media video editors. You'll be hard pressed to find any social media video that doesn't have captions to some capacity. And a quick way to be able to elevate yourself above other editors is to be able to design captions that match a client's brand. Now, I do want to warn you that this is a difficult tutorial. What we're actually doing is front loading a huge amount of work. But by spending three times as much effort now, we get 10 times the results tomorrow. Or another way you can look at this is we're investing your time now for a cash return tomorrow. So to get started with designing your own captions, we need to understand the psychology behind what makes great captions on shorts, reels, and TikToks. And the only rule you need to focus on is they need to be hyper readable. Fonts are coming in and out of screen really, really fast. So people need to be able to read them at a moment's notice. Here are the basic rules to go by. One, use well contrasted colors. That means either dark font with light outlining or a light font with dark outlining. And conversely, this usually means avoiding mid-tone colors that sit anywhere in that gray area as these are really hard to get a good contrast on. A thing to note with this contrast is that there always has to be an outline, background, or drop shadow on your captions because without it, it's really hard to see your captions against moving footage. It's essential for them to be hyper readable. Now, quick tip, if you're actually trying to figure out what two colors have enough contrast, you can go to Adobe's Color Contrast Analyzer. It's a free tool and you can put in two hex codes for the colors you want to use in your font and make sure they pass the color contrastor test in the regular text category. Two, you want thicker fonts over thinner, which again helps make sure they push away from the background as thin fonts can blend into footage like sticks in a forest. And three, make sure they're simple. Nothing with too many curls or licks in the actual font style you choose. You want something cleaner and simpler. Now that's design really in a nutshell. You can go deeper, but that's definitely more than enough to get us started and get you at a good level. So let's get into actually creating our first template together. And remember, if any of this feels like too much work, we have an exclusive collection of premium text packs at my store. These text packs are easy to adjust, customize and control and yeah, they have the job done for you. Now, essential resolve skill one is multi-shading your text plus clips. The first rule of design I mentioned was having high contrast fonts. This means we need to learn the multi-shading tab inside of text plus node. So let's dive into creating our first multi-shaded text plus clip now. But the first step is to add a text plus to the timeline. Now we want to modify the style of this font by going to the inspector and I'm gonna be changing the font to Roboto bold. And I'm going to make the character size 0.07 so that it fits easier on the screen. And then finally, I'm going to change the vertical anchor to bottom. This is really important as later on, this will prevent the text from being cut off bottom frame if you want to add two lines instead of one. And now we want to go to the layout tab and drag the Y coordinate to 0.15 to position the text where you typically see captions resting. Now that we've got the text position correctly, we need to get our shading organized. So we can go to the shading tab here and we can click on element two and we're going to enable this. We're going to be creating a black outline. Now in here, we want to crank that thickness to 0.1. Fun fact, if you want to go past the slider, you can actually manually type in a number and it will bring it out to be thicker. I'm going to go back here, 0.1 and change this to black. Now, before we move on, this is actually a great place to start testing and playing with colors, especially if you have clients where you can figure out what's going to work well with their company colors. And don't forget to use that Adobe tool to make sure the contrast is strong enough. But apart from that, let's move on to the essential resolve skill number two, character level styling. Now, character level styling is a text plus modifier that allows you to change the style of individual words. Now we have to go through Fusion to use this, but don't worry if you're completely new to Fusion, I will guide you step by step. So we can do this by simply right clicking on our text and going open in Fusion. Now to activate character level styling, we need to go to our text tab here and right click and choose character level styling. Now, this is technically a modifier and it won't mean much now, but do keep in your head about modifiers as we're gonna be playing with them to a whole new level later on in this video. Now we need to go to the modifier tab at the top here. Now you see this tab is pretty blank. We need to actually highlight a word, which will now make all these settings appear. And this is what gives us the ability to actually change our fonts text. 
In this case, I'm gonna emphasize the color with a green and make the size 0.09. Now, congratulations, our text now has an emphasized word. P.S. If you wanna find out how to animate these emphases like you'd see with an Alex Hormozzi video, then I actually have a video where I've covered that in the past, so you can find the link for that in the video. But keep watching this, watch that one after. Now, essential skill three and four cover animation methods. We're gonna start with something really simple using fusion nodes, but we're gonna get into really complicated things later on, but they produce really beautiful and amazing results. And best of all, once you've done it once, like we're saying before, you can use them time and time again like this. Here we're gonna be using fusion nodes to animate this word coming in from the right of screen. To start with this, we need to create a transform node. The transform node is this little square with corner arrows here. Now we can drag it on, and now we want to connect the text plus node to the yellow input, and then drag this to the media out. Next, we wanna make two keyframes, one at zero and then another one at 10. Go to frame zero and drag the X coordinates down until the text is off the screen, or just type in 1.5. At frame 10, make sure the center is still set to 0.5. Now, if you have a play of this, we have an animation. It's really boring and really simple, but it's an animation nonetheless. So now I'm gonna show you how to give this motion more life and energy and something clients would actually be happy to pay for. And our first step is to make this animation more smooth. And to do this, we're going to be using the spline tab. Now you wanna make sure this is actually open so you can check up the top right here and turn it on if it isn't. And then we wanna make sure displacement is checked. Then we wanna press zoom to fit. This diagonal straight line means the animation starts suddenly, plays evenly, and stops suddenly, hence the static lifeless feel. To fix this, we're gonna take the first keyframe by just highlighting over it like this, select the handle, and drag it up to the top. This will make the animation start fast immediately. And then we wanna take the second keyframe at keyframe 10, and we wanna drag it out horizontally like this, which will make the animation gradually slow down to a stop. And now we have a much more organic looking motion. It starts fast and decelerates down. Now here's a bonus trick to give the animation some extremely good elasticity. So starting at keyframe 10, go back three keyframes to frame seven and make a new keyframe. Change the X position to 0.48. This will create a little overshoot in the animation. Now we can go into the spline tab, highlight the two keyframes at the end and hold shift and press F to flatten these keyframes out and there you go, this is how you create a high quality animation that people would be happy to pay for. Now, if you really wanna dive down into more styles like that elasticity trick I showed, then I highly, highly, highly recommend you get the book, The Animator's Survival Kit. Now, this is from one of your classic Disney animators and this book really just dives deep into how to make animation and motion graphics feel like they have life. If you were to take the principles from this and apply it to motion graphics in Resolve of any kind, it will definitely elevate you above so many people. And finally, just going back in the fusion, don't limit yourself to just this transform node. There are so many awesome and incredible nodes that allow you to modify text in really creative ways, like you may have seen in my Halloween pack. So there is a lot of resources to learn around creating these kind of cool tools. And now moving on to essential resolve skill number four, the follow modifier. Now, just as a warning, we're going from the shallow end of difficulty straight to the abyss. But stress not, I'm gonna be with you every step of the way. And the reason why I'm taking you here is fusion nodes can only affect the text as a whole collective. If you wanna animate text on a character by character basis, we need to learn about the follower modifier. Now we want to add another modifier, but if you tried to add a modifier right now, you'll see it's grayed out. You can only have one modifier on a text at a time but you can have a modifier on top of a modifier. Here's how to do that. Make sure you've selected the text plus node, go to modifiers tab at the top, and then you wanna right click on your character level styling text and choose follower. And that's it. We've now added a modifier on top of a modifier. And now we're gonna use the follower modifier to create a character by character animation. And the first thing we need to do is set the delay here to 0.5. What this essentially means is that we wanna animate each character one by one every 0.5 frames. Next, we're gonna to go to the shading tab. This is where we can choose what settings we're going to have animated. And we're gonna go down to the rotation, make sure we're on keyframe zero first, and we wanna keyframe Z and set this to negative 10. Then we wanna go forward six frames and we wanna set this back to zero. Now, if we give this a quick play, we have this cool Roadrunner-esque style motion as the text lines itself back up. 
but there are two issues if you look at this closely, and the first is that the rotation feels a little stiff, and the black outline doesn't actually follow the animation, just the main text colour. We can fix both of these. First, to fix the stiff animation, we're just going to smooth it out in the spline graph like we've done before. Make sure to turn the spline on, and then we want to turn off the transform displacement so we get a cleaner view, and now hit the Fit to Window. We just highlight both these keyframes and press the S key. Just like that, we now have a smoother animation. Now let's move on to the final one, which is fixing this black. If we zoom in here, you can see that we're rotating and the black isn't actually following along. The traditional way and the way some people have shown it is you have to actually match these keyframes. So you'd go to your element number two. When we go to element two, make sure you're still in the modifiers tab. That's a pretty common mistake people make. And then you want to go down to rotation and we want to keyframe the Z axis. And then people would start, you know, going negative 10. And then we'd go here and make this zero. But if, even if you still look at this, it's slightly, ever so slightly off because we haven't put that spline graph in. So what we need to do is match element two to element one. And doing this manually would be really tedious. So here's the auto magic way to do this. First, we need to turn on a single keyframe, doesn't really matter where, for the Z rotation in element two. Then we right click and choose expression. Now we can left click and hold on this plus sign to get this pick whip and let it go over the Z axis. Now all we have to do is change this two to a one and just like that, the rotation angles are now linked. By the way, you can use this trick with any shading element in the follower modifier. Just pick whip the element to itself and change the number to one and voila, that element will follow whatever number one is doing. But why stop there? Let's add one final modifier position to really bring this to life. We're going to go back to element one in the follower modifier. At frame zero, we want to click on the keyframe position. It'll open up a path window. Ignore it and go back to position settings. At keyframe zero, set offset X to 0.1. And at keyframe six, set it back to zero. Go to shading element two, click the keyframe, ignore the path box, and using the same technique, use expressions to make it copy element one's position. Go to the spline editor and smooth out the animation. You may need to disable some clips so you can clearly see it. We're looking for the offset. And voila, we've created our own high quality, captivating caption template. And we're not just gonna stop here. Let's say we've created this awesome templated caption. How do we convert it from a horizontal video optimized clip to a vertical optimized clip? And it's really a lot easier than you may think. If we have a look at this right now, this clip here is designed for a horizontal format. But if I was to simply copy this and paste it into a vertical timeline, we have a template that still works in a vertical format. Now this is happening for a very specific reason, and that's because we have this template text plus effect happening first here. If we were to click into this template, go to the image settings, we can actually see that it's got an auto resolution. What this means is every time you copy these text plus nodes from one timeline to another, it's gonna automatically resize itself. So do keep that in mind when you're going to create these text plus effects or move them across, and they may just magically fit and work, which is great, or sometimes you're gonna to have to manually get in there and readjust, reposition them. But that's how you do it. Now don't go away yet because having high quality captions is just one step to being a profitable editor. You need to be able to add them quickly to your timeline because the difference between well-paid and not isn't how much, but how much per hour. So you should check out this video over here where I go over the best practices to add captions as quickly as possible. And as always, I really enjoy making these videos. I hope you've been enjoying them too. And until next time, I'll catch you around.